Hey, Armchair Generals, how you all doing? This is Con Or coming to you with another Company of Heroes 2 2v2. This game was actually sent in to me, and I apologize already that it's probably not going to be going up as it should be on Saturday for Submission Saturday, or Subscriber Saturday at that. Um, but my normal post for my, actually, my normal posting um, situation uh, was kind of modified this week, and I was not able to get this up as quickly or as efficiently as I wanted to. So I apologize already on that one. Nevertheless, we're going to focus really, really quickly on who the commanders are, because this is Road to Karkov, which means it can either be super, super quick and super, super bloody. So down here in the southeast, the first of our Fairmont players uh, playing ST Trademark F. And the commander of choice is going to be Elite Troops Doctrine. I'm not entirely sure how to call this guy. I think STF might be the way to go. His ally up here, uh, Titania, my aim is off point, Wood 4, is of course another uh, Wehrmacht player. We see both of them actually already moving into a very, very similar build. In fact, completely identical. But my aim is way off, uh, has close air support, elite troops doctrine, and Jaeger armor doctrine. It's kind of funny for me, I was reading this one on the way in, just because I like looking at the commanders over and over and over again. And the anti-infantry strafe and the anti-tank strafe basically say that the Stuka has lots and lots of powerful weapons, in case you didn't know. Um, facing off against them, actually just quickly go look at these guys, it is the blue trunked forces of Tab Jin, and Jin is going to be bringing in special weapons regiment. So we could be seeing those tank hunter infantry, which would be pretty boss. Um, and his ally over here, this is the yellow trunked forces of Fergus, and Fergus has partisan tactics, shock rifle, and Len Lease Tactics. But like I said already, we're going to have some quick action going on here. Two minutes in, we already have Pioneer Squads kind of lining up against each other. Against, actually, excuse me, against um, Conscripts. And from up close and personal, do pretty okay. And indeed already, even with our lousy ballistic skill, they could even just carve this entire Pioneer Squad away if ST is not careful. It looks like we should be able to make it out of there alive. Combat Engineers, in the meantime, are going to face off against Grenz, and the Grenz should do pretty decent. Oh dear god, they are all over the place. The Germans have just have no conception of a front line. It seems they're just getting wrecked like crazy. Grenadiers are looking to stem the bleeding, though, from STF, trying to throw more bodies in here, and this machine gun should just be running back for the high hills, but he's not going to do it just yet. And indeed, now with these conscripts inside this house, yeah, the Germans are in a lousy position, I'd have to say. Oh, never mind, they're backing away. So brave, brave souls, but not really converting on that one. Might see first blood though coming out against the Germans. Yikes! Never mind. We're gonna see uh, those uh, stun grenades instead, allowing those conscripts to just be shredded by their opponents. Up here in the north, my aim is way off. Or just let's call wood four. Uh, does have a nice fire point down here in this particular house with the MG42. Um, it's not going to get shifted out of there too quickly. Indeed, you do see that the Brits are just content to kind of hang back and have their own kind of fire point. Interestingly enough, though, we do see that this MG42 is only going to barely take these guys under fire. And indeed, this Vickers is not going to be able to do a whole lot against them either. They're just out of range, yeah. They're both just out of range of each other. In the south, though, we continue to see this action. Fergus is just being super, super aggressive. And he's taking heavy, heavy losses to do it, but, you know, he wouldn't be a Soviet player if he didn't go that direction. And interestingly, both Wood 4 and STF went for Elite Troops Doctrine. So, um, if we do see two Tiger Aces super late game, that could be terrifying. Oh my god, that'd be terrifying. Uh, but I don't know if that's really going to be the case. Brits are going to slap down a mortar pit in the middle part of the map. Not the best place for it. They do have the shot blockers over here, which is decent enough. Um, but it can be sieged down pretty easily, especially with this German mortar right back here. I dare say, though, that this mortar pit will be in range of the German mortar. And that'll be good enough for them. We are going to see that Wood 4, is that his troops that went up to uh, Battle Phase 1? No, it's going to be... You know, no, it is Wood 4 that's gone to uh, Phase 1. And indeed, we do see a bunch of German troops still looking to overload the southern side of the map. And Fergus really should consider getting a couple of uh, Maxims out in the field to stem the bleeding. I mean, good lord. Um, especially a thin map like Road to Kharkov is made 
made, I tell you, um, for very, very, um, I want to say infantry-centric builds. In fact, I would say the absolute opposite. Okay, Soviets just went down over here. Uh, don't think that was because of the... No, it was. Oh, dear God. It was because of the mortar team? Really? Brutal. Dear God, was that brutal. Um, we are going to have Royal Engineers inside this 3-inch mortar emplacement. Um, so kind of wasting them a little bit. Should just put an FOP up. And Fergus, for his own point, is going to bring out some partisans. He's going to go the partisan doctrine. Going a little bit later than we usually see it. I think a perfect opportunity would have been to plop out some partisans right here. Hammering this uh, machine gun would have been great, and even to pick on all these German troops right here. But it seems he's more concerned with taking out some of these deep partisans, excuse me, deep pioneers, and will decap this fuel point. <laughs> I mean, that's great, too. I mean, think about it. These Gewehrs are great for um, this kind of extended firefights, uh, but up close and personal, these PPSs can reap a bloody, bloody mess. Unfortunately, Fergus needs to get out of there or he's going to start losing everything. No, he do, does get away. Those stun grenades really need to be, I think, scaled back ever so slightly. And there's the forward assembly base. But that's wide open as well. You're, okay, alright. Tab, we got to work on this one, big guy. Jin, just got to put it back over here, I would say. He is going to tech into an AEC, and it does seem like he's going to lose himself a machine gun, and that's not what you want to lose. Those Vickers are pretty deadly. At least we have seen that um, Wood 4 is going to lose that, lose a upgraded squad for it. So not necessarily a great trade, but it could have been a heck of a lot worse, I suppose. And Stormy's being called in for Wood 4 as well. Uh, STF not going for it. And why have we... Oh, no, now he is finally going to go for it. And why not, I guess? Um, the Allies are only coming with a couple of vehicles right now. And one of those is going to be a clown car, which is going to have very, very limited use on the current battle space. <laughs> on the plus side, we are going to see, despite the fact that Jin's taking heavy, heavy losses, his mortar pay will pay dividends. There we go. Almost taking out an entire squad by himself. And combat engineers, unfortunately, don't have the accuracy to really take things on. And geez, Jin has no machine guns. He almost has no troops. He's the AEC is going to prowl around a little bit. And this half-track. Now, the half-track would be kind of good if it went for the e ZIS upgrade. I'm called a ZIS, that's essentially what it is. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen, though. Mortar pit in the meantime really should start putting fire, I would say, down on this area back here. But it seems the combat engineers are going to be more than willing to just kind of kick things up a notch. What? Okay. Fergus being a little bit scared, a little bit tentative there. He has lost his partisans. And his half-track is going down to the south. The clown car is in full effect. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough to take out... This machine gun on its retreat. But nine minutes in, we are going to see these uh, allies are down a significant, significant ticket investment here. But looks like that's going to be changing. And indeed, at least the middle has been decapped. The southwest is going to go to the uh, allies. And I believe the northeast as will go there as well. This be decapped, which is almost just as good. AEC in the area. Um... But they do have to be a little bit more concerned about the fact that we could see these stormtroopers coming on up. And with the Shrek, that would be pretty darn bad. I'm wondering, does the UKF, they haven't invested in the mill bombs yet. And indeed, we're going to see those Sten engineers charging forwards. Not the greatest of strategic plans. But okay. Actually, forgive me, I went away just as the stormtroopers came up here. I'm going to put some fire into that AEC. <laughs> and between the Panzerfaust and the Shrek, the AEC is going to intelligently back away. We might even see some rounds coming in from the mortars. Mortars should be able to drop, actually, rounds right over here. Uh, hasn't quite taken him out yet, though. In the meantime, this half-track's going to take us some firepower from the southwestern 
Stormies. So maybe I was maligning this whole idea going for the whole dual elite troops doctrine a little bit too much. You do get a fair bit of versatility. Ooh, but here comes another squad of partisans looking to take out maybe these pioneers on retreat? No. No, for some reason he's going for the grenadiers, and I think that's a mistake right there. <laughs> we could, though, see some grenadiers go down here. No, we don't. Again, these partisans are really missing opportunities here. But at least they have decapped the strategic point in the back, which will force the Germans to kind of play catch-up a little bit, even though their fuel income is really not that bad right now. Now, what could be kind of interesting, could this mortar go down? Because, yep, it's going to go down. Um, retreat and retreat, and you might make it out alive. I'm not sure, though. It looks like this partisan's going to drop for no good reason, and yep, there they go. So it could have been a great opportunity, but unfortunately is not going to be capitalized on. And that would be one other squad of partisans going down. So Fergus, unfortunately, playing fast and loose and paying the price. Tab Jin is uh, still holding it together with a very, very, very minimal um, armor, excuse me, army compositions. Interesting to know we will see a fuel cache going down over here to the northwest. Uh, definitely looking to increase a lot of that fuel income for the Soviets early on, which they will need to combat these fairly, fairly quick heavy armor support for the Germans. We see a Stug G down here to the south. And we see a P4 coming out of Wood 4. So between the two of them, it's going to be very, very difficult to catch up. Worthwhile to note that in the north, um, both players are actually are barely on five command points. In the southwest, the other two seem to be a little bit further advanced. And this right here is such an OP thing. For 50 munitions, you know where everything is on the map for your opponents. For a good, what, 10, 15 seconds? Yeah, pretty boss right there. And I don't know if that actually allows. No, it's just, oh no, it, it does reveal them. That could have been excellent. Could have been a perfect way to just snipe off a couple of units here. And luckily for the Germans, it did not quite happen. Still go prowling around to the north. Um might see some anti-tank partisans being popped out of a house or two. And Fergus really should be doing that, I would say. Unfortunately, those machine guns are just being placed way too well for him to kind of deal with that effectively. And right now, you're going to see that mortar pit pay the price of being out in the open. Um, instead of bracing, he's even going to take some more fire. Oh, structure brace. There we go, finally. I was a little concerned about that. AEC is going to slide on in, try to push back the Stug, but he's going to find out it's probably not the best of plans. Could take some really, really hard hits there. Six pound AT gun has been made by the Brits, but that will not be enough either. And as this gun is coming out for the Soviets and anti tank partisans as well, but these guys are out in negative cover, which means they're going to take some heavy, heavy losses if they're not careful. Hey, I don't know, half-track goes down. Um, and those anti-tank partisans are going to be forced away. And with that, I believe... ...that um, the Allies are going to lose something very dear to them. Whether that's the forward assembly area, which is going to be a big loss already. Or the mortar pit. Either way, they're in rough shape. Now, this Vickers over here is going to take some firepower, I would say, pretty soon from this P4. And in fact, it's surprising that the P4 hasn't taken it out already. But he does get forced away before he can finish the job. Mostly thanks to that six-pounder. Uh, to the south, we will see again that although there's a big, big push made by the Soviet infantry, stun grenades are really evening the playing field way more than they should. Let's take a look at those things real quick. So they crawl and reduce the range for five seconds. That's insane. Insane on the membrane. Another stroke's coming out for STF. Wood 4 is not teching up just yet, I don't think. Might be the better idea. But I think both players for the Germans are going to kill time until they can bring in that Tiger Ace. Um, one minor thing to note would have been better perhaps to put uh, the... Medic bunker, just one medic bunker between the two bases. I understand the idea behind putting one in each. 
But if you're reinforcing, there's no point to kind of going too crazy with it. Fergus has already teched up to getting his Mechanized Armor Compania, which means he's all the way up. Um, not going to be able to really convert too easily on it. He does have a... a oh, wow. Total blank. T-3476. I was going to call it 85 for a second, but I knew that wasn't right. And somehow, against all odds, this mortar emplacement is still up and running. I'm going to be dropping rounds on top of these grenadiers. Yep. I'm guessing that's going to be the MVP of the entire game. Also going to see a anti-tank front opening up over here by the Soviets. And indeed, uh, they might see the death of a Cromwell, but a Stug will probably also go down in the meantime as well. Just slide back and forth. The short engine goes out for the Cromwell, but it's still not dead, technically. At least not completely dead. B4 continues to take hits, and although that AEC might die, uh, main gun destroyed, never mind. One more lucky round could see the death of this P4, especially from an AEC. Ooh, but no, he goes down instead. That's unfortunate. And good ideas do come out, but they just drop themselves needlessly into the fray. And now the Stug comes forward, trying to pick on the T-34. T That's not a great idea. One more burst of fire, I think, for the two anti-tank guns, but no, he makes it away in time. Lucky for him. Fergus, it might be better to be a little bit less aggressive, especially when you see their other self-propelled guns out and about. But the worst seems to have been staved off by the Allies, even though they are down almost 170 tickets. Mortars galore going down, not going to do a whole lot. And Ferguson kind of wondering if he has not gone for medics. And if he hasn't, it might be something to consider. Yeah, Fergus, uh, you're losing an awful lot of manpower here. It could have been spent just getting a couple of medics on the field. It could be very... Um, what's the term I'm looking for here? Would have been great to conserve that for your troops. I'm not, that's not the right way to put it. But it would have been a lot better to utilize in the long term. 14 kills still on this mortar pit. And he's not able to really hit everything he wants to. It's unfortunate, but we go aiming for here or here. Fergus, in the meantime, just continues to plop out partisans just to harass. And um, if these guys go in this house, yep, there goes a grenade. They're not going to get out in time and take a fair amount of damage. Oof, and they're lucky right there. That could have been disastrous for the Germans. Had those mortar rounds actually impacted, that could have been hugely disastrous. House will go down, and I don't know how these guys took some secondary fire on that, but they did. And Tab Jin is actually bringing in the Tank Hunter Infantry Sections. That'd be kind of fun. Where are those guys popping out? Oh, coming from the northwestern edge of the map right there. Note, by the way, STF can go and uh, do the Casualty Interrogation. Pretty interesting ability that doesn't get used anywhere near enough, I don't feel. Uh, but it seems we don't get a whole lot of look at that. Oh, nope, never mind. Here we go. Stug showing itself over here against two T-34s and anti-tank partisans. So while they take devastating losses to do it, they do do some at least decent damage, moderate damage perhaps, to the Stug. The Stug is not set to actually hit the correct targets, which would be those vehicles, especially on rear armor hits right now. And unfortunately, this is that one time that we don't really like Road to Kharkov is because this thing right here gets super, super slim, which gets a kind of grindy battles going on. So let's see about 20 minutes in. Oof, are we going to see a death of a tank? I'm going to switch down these uh, vision right here a bit. Yep, there goes one. One of our panzers has been destroyed. But this, um... Panzer IV over here, especially with the support from this one, this really should be a couple of dead allied vehicles, but shockingly enough, they make it out okay. Interesting. Now, why Fergus? Um, I get enough munitions, I can kind of just make sure I can call on a marked vehicle whenever I need to. And given the fact that I know that I'm facing up against elite troops doctrine, I will definitely need it at some point. We'll continue to see that Tab Gen, unfortunately, is not every supporting fire is not going to be coming in anytime soon. And hold the line. 
Um, uncommon, perhaps. I, I don't necessarily see that's a great decision. I mean, it, it's it's nice, but increased defense is not going to be worthwhile if you're only really fielding a couple of squads of infantry. <laughs> Allied barrage incoming, so kind of interesting. What is that? No. Oh, it's this gun. Big stinky deal. And Blob City starting to happen over here. I'm not too happy about that one. Partisans are going to try to be holding onto the line. Not the greatest of plans, especially against mainline infantry for the Grenadiers. And another Stug is coming out for the Germans. So it seems that they're just going to go and smother the Allies in kind of beefy armor. I'm going to notice in the meantime that... Um, Typhoons have not done a whole lot of strafing. Now the heavy panzer corps has been created over here for Wood 4, so we could definitely see a couple of panzer verfers, or maybe a panther tank might be a better option to go for the panther tank, but the broom bar, my guess, is probably a bad idea. Just suggesting them. Tank hunter section is going to play, take a round or two over at the Stug, which is going to ping off its armor. Not going to be too terrifying to face off against. And indeed, this Kromos is probably going to get picked up pretty darn quickly here. Yep. He goes down. Isn't that just a shame? Um, because those Kromos are just, you know, looking for the stiff upper lip and all that. Uh, but Tulip Rockets are now on the field in the form of the Sherman Firefly. And if he gets anything down, that could be a big, big loss against the Germans. And that's what happens. You took a tank and you put a tulip rockets right into it, and that guy's gonna get fried. And intelligently, he's gonna back away, realizing that he's outgunned, even though the only he's really gotta worry about is that Zis gun right now. Panther, though, for some reason, decides that he's gonna be okay with things, and he's gonna buy it too, because, um, well, that 17 pounder is still on the field. Oof, but just very, very luckily, the round whistles by, not actually hitting him. And that's just a little bit too much luck for my mind. I wish he would taken that to the bank and cashing his uh, lottery ticket, because he's not going to win that one again. Enemy has destroyed a panzer. And I still missed that panzer going down anyway, so it seems that the T-34 and the SU-85s were more than enough to just kind of slide up and pick off that panzer. Which means that what is left of the German armored force? Well, a couple of P-4s, which are solidly built machines, don't get me wrong. And a Stug. Uh, not overwhelming, not terrible, but not overwhelming. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, what are we going to see coming out from the Allies at this point? Fergus is bringing in another SU 85. His infantry is in shambles. I'm pretty sure he still hasn't gone for medics. Yes, Fergus, buddy, you got to get medics, big guy. It's got to happen. The barrage is incoming. Where is the barrage going? I, I'm so curious. Oh, supporting fire is finally coming in. Concentrated fire operation. Where is it coming in? Oh, pff, okay. Heavy supporting fire. So, really not that much fire coming in at the moment. And indeed, I think at this point, it's more area denial more than anything else. Tulips are going to come in off of this firefly. He might buy it for his trouble, but he might be able to take out Panzer IV, no, he's going to go down. That little firefly is never going to be sung of. In fact, it's just a swan song. He's going to go down, that poor guy. And it's going to give this P4 vet too. Taking a quick look at veterancy, the Germans are in much better shape, I would say, than the Allies. Oop, never mind. Wood 4 is taking heavy losses, and indeed only has a couple stars of veterancy in his entire army. STF has done pretty well for himself, though. Can't complain too much there. Fergus, it's been kind of hit or miss. He's had some really, really great opportunities. He's got some really, really lousy opportunities for veterancy. And Jin has great veterancy on one unit of his Tommies and great veterancy on his mortar. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. More rounds going to be coming in on top of this uh, position. Yep. 
heck of a lot worse. And P4 in the meantime is going to be charging forward a little bit unintelligently. All it really takes is one or two more rounds, and that guy's going to buy it. And 30 minutes in, although they are controlling the tickets quite well, quite well, I still would not want to be the Germans. Their tanks are getting torn to shreds every single time they even peek on the front lines. And although they're doing pretty well in taking out their opponent's armored material, indeed looking at this guy right here, he could even go down in just a second. Oh my gosh. But please don't tell me he's going to lose it to this. No, never mind. He goes down. Okay. So, maybe at the highest tier play right now, but uh, this is a opportunity for both players, to, both sets of players, excuse me, to get better. Fortunately, tunneling a little bit much on um, certain sections, which I kind of understand. I mean, this game is still in extraordinarily beautiful. That stroke's going to go down. I think the Germans are just waiting for an opportunity to bring a Tiger Ace. Wood 4 is especially doing it. And there's one coming in for STF, and Wood 4 is going to go for a Broom Bar instead. So interesting choice. Very interesting choice. By interesting choice, I say probably the wrong one. But that's okay. Their game, not mine. Um, Conscript's moving forward. They're going to toss out. My guess is just maybe... No, no, no. Waste of munitions. I kind of thought... You know, incendiary grenades, something... But no. This step is going to see this Tiger Ace is out on the map, and this big cat got claws. Rather intelligently, all of the allied material says it's time to run in the other direction. Never mind, this SU-85 and anti-tank partisans are doing a fair number on this Tiger Race, getting down to half health already. Grenadier's going to come up, though, takes probably an opportunistic shot or two. Retreat, anti-tank partisans, retreat! You cannot be lost, but he will be lost. That's a shame right there. And a fair bit of activity over here on this side of things. P4s are lining up on the SU-85s so and will take one out. Firefly might do pretty well with the other SU-85. We could see the death. Yep, there goes one P4. And there's still a massive Shrek blob between Pgrens and Stormtroopers. That's five Shreks. Five. Brewbar's going to charge forwards and right into the middle of this 17-pounder. That's going to be pretty bad. Um, SU-85 is going to go down from Fergus. The question really is, 17-pounder going to take out the Brewbar? My guess is yes. There he goes, out of control. He's down already. So it might have been much better just to go and probably save that manpower for a legit, legit tank, i.e. the Tiger A's. Tommy's doing pretty well, though. They do take out the Stormies on retreat. Do you see that drop? That Shrek. And for some reason, the P4 is going to get a repair priority over that of this Tiger Race, and I think that's kind of a mistake right there. I also think it's a mistake, though, that Fergus... Not Fergus, excuse me. Jin is not reinforcing everything like absolute crazy. This is the great time to do so, and it's a great time to push forwards. Unfortunately, that will not be the case. Fergus, have you please gone for medics? No, you've not. Got to do that, big guy. Um, and on the plus side, he does have a fairly vetted up group. That's only because whatever has been weak has been pulled out from the herd. They've been taken out. And kind of uh, laid to rest on these roads of Kharkov. But 33 and 5 seconds in, and we're just continuing to see some kind of uh, human wave attacks going on back and forth. It's kind of unfortunate to see. Very, very unfortunate. Fergus, for his own point, is going to go for another SU-85. I think it's the third of the map. And all of these grenadiers and these conscripts are not going to be able to kind of, you know, stave off all this attention. However, if there's anything I will say, these mortar rounds could come in and take out that house. And if they do, that's a lot of manpower lost. A lot of high-value manpower at that. Between um, all of STF's troops, that represents pretty much all of his highly vetted up squads. Wood 4 is shifting forwards again with these kind of Shrek blobs. Um, he's got 
attacking an emplacement. A little bit of firepower going out for the 17 pounder, but eh. No risk off the nose on that one. And indeed, this machine gun back here can't even contribute a whole lot to the fight, just being way too far away. Panzer Warfare has launched its own deadly rounds, but it's not going to do enough either. And we just kind of settled into this very, very weird, kind of nebulous area of the match. Interestingly, though, that 17-pounder has managed to gain itself two stars of veterancy, which I just never see, mostly because no one ever makes 17-pounders. Um, and shockingly, despite the fact that the Brits were getting knocked around like crazy in the beginning part of the game, they're doing pretty well now, mostly because Wood 4's troops are not the highest of vetted. Highest number of veterancy? Highest veterancy? Not, not particularly vetted up, let's put it that way. Fergus, though, he has his um, newest toy on the field, and it continues to hurt me that he's not going for that field infirmary. Um, Anti-tank partisans being called in very, very far behind. Maybe trying to pick up that fuel, I don't know, but there's going to be forced to retreat, and indeed, taking horrendous losses to do it, too. If these guys go all the way down, it's just going to be a whopping 270 manpower for no good reason whatsoever. But they do make it away, and I'm pretty happy to see that. Though, for some reason, we are going to see another Broombar coming in for Wood 4. Ooh, Partisan's going to come in on the, on the flank of these Pegrens, but it's not going to matter. Those Pegrens have a ton of automatic weapons, or at least semi-automatic weapons. Plus the Grens. Plus this very, very, very annoying MG back here. And this MG has been spent a giant pain in the rear end for... The Soviets, well, actually for the entire northern flank. You keep seeing it happen again and again. The Brits come forward with a couple of squads, and they push back the Grenz just enough to allow them to recap the area, but it's not going to be enough in the long term. And indeed, P4 comes down to the south, as does that Tiger Ace. And as are the Pioneers. Um, and with this kind of resistance, I don't think the Soviets can really manage to stave it off with this. Good gosh, the Tiger East by itself should be able to take these guys on. Um, and instead it starts getting tickled by the Zis gun, but these Gewehrs are just shredding that anti-tank crew. And one good shot takes it out. And that's, that's a big problem right there. It's a huge problem. Tiger Ace of seven kills, not really worthwhile just yet. Um, he's dropping his guy back down inside the tank because it's gonna be a little more safe for him. And the SU-85 is not going to be able to trade effectively against them, especially with the support from these Grens. We can kind of hustle forward and throw out things like, oh, like, I don't know, rifle grenades and Panzerfausts on tanks and all that kind of stuff like that. Firefly is going to do pretty well. And with the addition of this Vickers machine gun, we could see finally a squad or two go down. And if we do that, it could be, not going to say a huge thing to turn this battle around, but it could be at least significant to note. We finally get to see coordinated... Ooh, what? Coordinated fire operation just came down, son, and that, that just wiped out a squad as well. So STF had been great, great forces. Now that's not really the case anymore. P. Forsen knows that um, he's a little bit caught out here. And while that Tiger Ace is right here, though... Oh, gosh, never mind. Um, this ew, is hard to watch. Tiger Ace recently had seven kills, now he's got 11. He, every single time he fires, it just seems like another handful of Soviets gets carried away. Unto death. I'm still kind of shocked that Wood, f uh, Wood 4 has not gone for his Tiger Ace. I feel like a dual Tiger Ace could have been absolutely killer. Fortunately, that is not going to happen. Another big push come up with another Shrek blob, and with um, MG42 sliding in, we're going to see a, like I said, what amounts to essentially Company of Heroes Trench Warfare. This combat tank's got to back up because, geez, six Shreks, and that can take out a, a lot of your health super, super quickly. And indeed, we're just going to see them start firing into the emplacements, which are far less... Um, I'm not going to say resilient, because that's not true, but they're far less able to deal 
I'm far more able, rather, far less, uh, I can't think of these words right now, guys, I'm sorry. Far less vulnerable, perhaps, um, to Shreks as opposed to tanks. I'm going to do this in the meantime, though. Um, is that still mortar fire coming in? Yeah, these are actually dropping in smoke rounds to be enjoyed by this Grenadier squad, but smoke rounds don't do a whole lot when your opponent is throwing out high explosives. So interesting challenges. Who gets shot out first? And my, for my money, it's probably going to be these Grenadiers. <laughs> Number two section is going to slide itself just inside the capture point, and they throw out a Ganon Bomb. Yes, they did. Not going to do enough to really to completely wipe out the Germans, but do enough to encourage them and delicately to move back. The Tiger Ace is in here as well, so is the second Broom Bar. And again, I find this Broom Bar to be kind of a bad decision. Of course, not as bad a decision as Jin Centaur tank that he's bringing in right now, which makes me want to weep. Um, you guys know out there, I'm not a huge fan of Centaur tanks, mostly because those things just... I'm, uh, they're just, there's better options, I feel. Um, especially as this many Shreks, the Centaur is really just kind of a liability. As it is, this mortar is going to be desperate to just push back the Shrek blob. And if we can get a couple of good rounds, we really could see some devastation here. But they're focusing in the wrong area. Indeed, we are going to see the tank hunters are going to get uncommon under a fair amount of firepower. And why is the mortar still firing down here? It's looking for the MG. I can, I can kind of understand that, I suppose. We're missing out on an opportunity here, though. Um, Brits do manage to lose that center VP. I'm going to pick it back up just after it gets decapped. It's just kind of a, a slight oopsie. But almost as bad as the fact that right now we have an MG42 out here. Up here at the front lines doing a dirty number. But 4115 into this game, and we still are being not so much deadlocked, but uh, every single time we seem that we're going to have a push through from somebody, it just doesn't seem to happen. <laughs> Mostly because we have positioning like machine guns of like here and here, and instead of being a little more aggressive perhaps with troops like going around the left or going around the wide, wide right. Uh, we have a lot of hey, diddle, hey, diddle, diddle kind of decisions here. Now, Centaur tank is coming forward. It might be a good position to deal with some of the infantry that's here. If that is the case, I will gladly eat my hat, but this comet is going to get wrecked by all this AT fire. Managing to get off one or two rounds, but he's going to go down super, super quickly. Leaving the centaur with really nobody to kind of back him up. He's got a firefly there, but that's not going to be enough. It seems to be the sign for the Germans to go and flank around the eastern side. That's a good plane right there. Um, and this Vickers is not going to be enough to keep this entire area contained. 17 pounders is going to try to turn around and put some fire into these super heavy tanks. And it can do a decent job, but a lot of Shreks are going to come in instead. And yep, there it goes. 17 Potter does go down. But dear God, a bunch of Shreks are on the field. Centaur's got two kills, not a whole lot. And this is a perfect time. Engineers, pick up all these Shreks. You could turn this around. This could be so beautiful. There we go. There's one Shrek coming out. Destroyed engine over here. Um, Tiger Ace is now stunned. Panther is still on the field, but again, Shrek's galore, and this could be the turnaround the Brits are waiting for. This is just a perfect opportunity. Yep, there goes the Panther. That goes down. And this is kind of a bit of a... Oops. I did it again moment. And that might have been the straw that breaks the camel's back, because now the Allies should be able to rush forwards on a fair bit of momentum here. This P4 is rather beastly, don't get me wrong, but there's so many captured Shreks now out on the field that we could really see a turnaround. Broombar's going to try to throw rounds into the Firefly. It's not going to go too well, and indeed the SQ-85 and the Firefly by itself should be able to take out the Broombar. And with that gone, Wood 4 is going to be pretty much forced to go. Oh, there goes the Broombar. 
going to be going for that Tiger Ace. So to be fair, Jin also has really no infantry left. Those guys have been shredded to within an inch of their lives. And I don't even know where to look anymore, guys. I don't know. 141 to 259, 44, 10 into this game. Where is all of those captured Shreks? Okay, well, there's going to be a Shrek on that squad. And they're looking for that P4, and I kind of feel like it's a great time to kind of be rushing forward to pick that guy off. Before this wears off, this is a great time to be picking to attack your opponent. Firefly has just bought it because of those Shreks. And that's a shame right there. But yeah, three Shreks are out in the field. Oh, there we go. So we're finally going to see some Shrek fire coming in. Tank engines being hit. And this is a chase him down right now moment, but it's not going to happen, unfortunately. Missed opportunity yet again. Mortar Pit is still barely alive. 51 kills on that. 51. And now every single infantry section has at least one... Excuse me, not even infantry section. Every single UK unit, literally besides the Mortar Pit, anything that, has a, that doesn't have sandbags around it has some sort of anti-tank presence. And can we finally see this, this machine gun go down? If it does, that could be rather perfect. There we go. Finally goes down. The STF is just kind of like staggering, just taking so many losses in the last couple of minutes here. And what had been very much a German game to lose is now being lost. Might see a dead infantry section. No, we don't. They're going to stumble out of the way, just barely. And again, down here to the south, we'll see this capture MG42 is going to set itself up. Oh, nope, he's going to get taken out. Never mind. And instead, we're going to see this Tiger Ace coming forward yet again. There's so much AT over here. This really shouldn't be lasting as long as it is. And all of Jin, Jin should be just rocking huge amounts of anti-tank sections. Like, it just it screams it. But instead, he's going to go for a couple more Vickers. So at least he's investing with manpower. At least that's a decent thing right there. Death of the Tiger Ace, though. We're going to see a lot of rounds coming in, and again, this guy gets stunned because of all. No! Aim for the correct target, please. This Tiger Ace is going to go down sooner or later. Um, I, gotta, I gotta get a close-up on this. Bravely, he's just kind of like taking rounds to the face. There he goes. He's down. That P4 is coming forward, trying to stem the bleeding. But he's going to get taken out as well if he's not careful. Yikes. Kick that HUD back on. Wow. MG42 still down here. Dropped Shreks are down all over the place. But there's still now four Shreks on the Soviet side. And the Jin still has a bunch of Shreks on his troops. Yeah, if these guys are just a teensy bit more... Um, aware of just un the unfortunate things like taking infirmary. That That is kind of a rookie thing that should have been happening, Fergus. I'm sorry, buddy. I have to say it. But 47-35 in, um, we could be seeing a little bit higher gameplay here. Um, but we're still getting our money's worth. I mean, dear God. Tiger tanks are being taken out. King tigers being taken out. Panzer Riffer is now on the field. We know that guy is here. Um, I didn't even see the other one go down, but Oy, oy vey. Rear armor hit, not getting what he wanted to out of that one. Um, but yes, yes, it could definitely be a very, very different set of plays here. Panzer River firing, my guess is on top of this VP. Yes, looking for that infantry section, not getting it though, unfortunately. Down in the southwest, STP, excuse me, STP. We're not talking about some Stone Temple pilots here. No plush. Um, what I meant to say was Wood Forest troops. Kind of going out, and again with these Shrek blobs, I feel like this is the new kind of German response to things. Uh, gonna have a very, very late game Panther coming out, but this guy's got no veterancy whatsoever. He's gonna charge forwards, and he's gonna get shredded by all this. SU-85s, Firefly. Well, luckily for him, those tulip rockets are not amazing. 
Um, and because there's that little bit of brouhaha in the in the actual pitch, um, they have a tendency to miss a little bit more often than they should. P4 is moving forwards again, though, and again, there's just so many Shreks and so much anti-tank. It doesn't seem to matter too much. This SU-85 is going to go down. But anti-tank partisans, you just need to do one more salvo, and they will get it. They should get it. If they don't get it, I kind of want to know why. There we go. And there goes the AP-4. So while this uh, T-3476 is probably going to buy it, um, this is this point is just being trading lives for tickets. And that's all the Brits and all the Soviets are really trying to do here. What? These guys have great, great aim for that smoke cover. That thing should have been protecting him. But um, not really going to save him too easily. It's only a two... Shrek Blobs and... Dude, you were rocking crazy Shrek Blobs yourself. He went to STF. That's not fair. Um, his ally was definitely doing that, though. Rifle grenades going out on all directions. Basically, the last thing that the Germans can do to kind of stave off this infantry assault. In the north, yeah, they could take some firepower, but not that much. And Fergus does note that he's getting a lot of gifts here because of those Shreks. Um, it's going to fire soon. I kind of be... Wow. Skex and Srex. Kind of waiting for that uh, Panzerwerfer to fire. For some reason, whenever I see a Panzerwerfer fire, I think to myself, like, chariots of fire. Um, it sounds silly, but just watching him, I, I think it's like... I don't know. It's a very, very interesting thing to me. A round's coming in, but I don't know from what. The mortar seems to be awfully far away. But I guess not. 59 kills. That guy is just the hero of the match. 70 pounder has been taken out a long time ago. That big, big rush that happened about 10 minutes ago in the game um, may not be seen by you guys in the long term. But pretty beastly. SDF trying to push out from the south. He's picking in a couple of Stugs. And if his opponents don't pick up the right number of armored vehicles here, we could see another swing yet. But three T-3476s. Still four Shreks in favor of Fergus. Tab Jin still has a bunch of Shreks in his favor. The other Comet Tank's coming out. Um, so... We could see another massive battle yet. 50 tickets left. I imagine there be one more good, hefty battle happening here. And the mortar really should be just launching rounds downrange. There we go, that's one right there. In the north, though, okay, so Panther is going to come forward, charging rather bravely, but this is a Comet tank, son. And while it is not going to be the most effective at breaking through the armor, it should be doing a little bit more than it is right now, I have to admit. And gee, Stormy's behind this machine gun. Yep, that's a dead machine gun right there. But coupling in all these T-34s and all this infantry and all of this, you know, everything this um insurgent group over here shouldn't be lasting very long stormy's throwing out a couple of rounds not gonna get that grenade that they're hoping for and indeed being forced to retreat yep very 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 um not interpretive what's the term I'm looking for um perspective rounds coming out not the right ones either well, the Panther's going to go down. I imagine this P4 is going to follow in very, very quick succession with the Comet and two T-34s and two more on the way. And this Panzer Buffer really should be a um, priority as well. Ooh, but instead we're going to see coordinated fire. This one T-34 is going to go down already. Another one's going to fire, though, and probably take out this P4. Be a good plan. There it goes. He's going to buy it in return. And these strokes are going to come in and just really, really harass these T-34s again. So, T-34s buying it like crazy. But it still remains that there's so many Shreks in the middle part of the field. And there's not a lot left for the Germans. STF has dropped to just, really, just two squads of mainline infantry and a couple of vehicles. 
get the feeling that an AT grenade or two would be more than enough to take this guy out. Anti-tank partisans, though, sliding up one more round would be enough to take that first Stug out. And if that goes down, a damaged engine, that's an anti-tank grenade right there. Out of control. He's down. D3476 says, oh, bro, you're shooting at me? Well, that's fine. You talking to me? I can talk to you right back. It's going to continue to throw rockets into side and rear armor. But it seems he's even more concerned about taking out some of his infantry, and that's probably a good plan. Never mind. What's left for armored vehicles, though? Wood 4, toss in your Tiger Ace, my friend. That could be actually turning the field of battle right now. I mean, there's not anything left really on the field to fight with, but if you do that, that could be more than enough. Partisans are going to continue to kind of trade. There we go, there's finally that Tiger Ace. Trade some firepower against Stormies, but the Stormies are going to be able to take him up in a long, straight up gunfight. Germans, though, are almost dead, just barely hanging on by the slimmest of margins. And how many kills does this thing have now? 70 kills. It's been a doozy of a game. 55 minutes and 15 seconds in, and we still have a Vickers out in the field. There's just support weapons everywhere. Um, what's this over here at MG42? There's another Vickers, I'm sure, up to the north. Oh, that's been recruited. And now the big P Grand Rush is happening in here, and yep, Tiger Race is coming in as well. Sariku Vickers is going to suppress this infantry. But this Tiger Ace should be able to push him back without any kind of real effort. And indeed, that Comet is going to throw rounds into it and just kind of. That's kind of that guy's just going to laugh it off. But every bit of Jin's troops are charging forwards. And it's going to be a massive, massive blob just to kind of just pick it off as much as possible. Anti-tank grenades going in. That's sorry, heat grenade rather. And I see the end of this big cat. Kind of um, ignominious death here. Or am I wrong? This cat lived to fight another day. Never mind. There he goes. And that miracle of German engineering dies, and that pretty much ends all hope, all dreams. Yep, and that's it. They're backing off now. So after an extremely, extremely long game, 56 minutes and 33 seconds, we are going to finally see a tap out from the Germans, leading the end score 109 to 10. Um, just a couple bits of tips for both sides here. Uh, Wood 4, I'm not entirely sure why you went for a couple of broom bars. Would have been much, much more um, effective, I would say, <laughs> to go for an earlier Tiger Ace. That could have definitely turned the tide of battle. Um, STF... Did pretty well, more or less. I have to say, honestly, the what he was dis decisions could be rather interesting there. Jin, boo boo, yeah, tank hunters galore, man. He could have gone for that like crazy. And Fergus, my friend, uh, we got to pick up that early, early field infirmary. Could have saved a lot of heartache um, throughout the games. Nevertheless, th thank you, Fergus, for sending this game to me. Um, definitely interesting to cast, and I hope uh, we have picked up some things that kind of observing, both from our end, and I hope you guys have picked up some stuff from yours as well, of what not to do. Um, a couple of videos to check out on the channel if you haven't already. I do have another tactical talk out on combating the USF meta. So if you haven't seen that yet, feel free to check that out. It's uh, been received pretty well so far. I hope you guys will like it. Nevertheless, that's going to be it for me today, guys. This is Connor Work signing off. Take it easy.